assign that app. Where's the app? Single sign on app. Create a new app, browse apps, active app. This is an active app. There are many ways, but uh, we'll just do it. So let us assign this app now to Tom. Like you can see, it's already here. But let's just follow the note so that we make sure that what's in the note is more. All right, so we'll go to assign. We say assign to people, and then we click the name of the person we want to assign to, and then we we'll reactivate the email. That way, they get an email verification and the URL to the portal. All right, so we'll come here and we'll say assign, assign to people. Which person do you want to assign this application to? Uh, to, to this guy, so you say assign. I am just the administrator. I don't need to use it. So, but if I need it, I also assign to my team. Uh, immutable ID, we don't really need it. So we can just say save and go back. Right, and then it's now. So that application has now been assigned to Tom. Like you can, okay. So luckily we have this open. Let's let's check again. Let's renew. Let's refresh this page. Last time we checked, it was not there was nothing assigned. So if we refresh now, are we going to see that it's been assigned? Yes. So the application is now assigned. If we're going to assign thirty five, maybe not in one day, but over time. Then this is how we assign them one by one. Assign, 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 assign. But of course, we would in operations we will have a, an automation method of just doing that instead of doing that thirty five times for each person. We just have a shortcut. But for me. all right, so that is assigned. What's the next thing we want to do? Now? So we click the name, and then we we'll go to. Uh, resend activation email. We saw that earlier on. So let's go to resend activation email. So this is it. Uh, resend password email. What did, what did that say activation? Uh, resend password is me. Email is what it should be. Resend password. Email so that you are not looking for activation and you are saying, I can't find it. All right, so if we do that for July, oh, is this July? You didn't even correct me. I wanted to sign in as a. So let me click here. I wanted to sign in. In fact, I'm going to. Bear with me. So if I click this name, Tom, and then for Tom, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm confusing you. It will keep reading July because it's me that is signing. It's July that is signing, doing this work, not Tom signing. Tom is not signing yet. We are just preparing for Tom to sign. So forgive me. All right. So I say return to Tom, and it's actually showing on top there. If you can see that, and I say uh, send a reset password email to Tom. And then I say reset password. All right, so that is Tom. All right. So reset password has now been sent to Tom. So let Tom go and check their email and see the, if the email arrived. So I come here. That's why I left this open. I come here to. Where's Tom here, by the way? Let me search for Tom amongst all of this long list of email addresses. Uh, bear with me. So Tom. All right, so this is uh, get Tom. Uh, do we have any email for Tom? Let's check. Yeah, we do have an email for Tom that says account password reset, right? So this is the URL for Tom to be able to log into us, right? That's the URL. If you experience difficulty accessing your account, send an email to the administrator. The administrator is July. All right, so first of all, I want to reset password. 
and then give a new password. Which other password do I know other than the same password? So I'll still use the same. So the same one was, remember the same one was issued by the administrator, but now we are giving a chance to the owner of the account to enter their own preferred password so that the administrator does not know the password. Octa administrator. So control V, control V. All right, will you accept it even though it's the same? Uh, password cannot be the same as the current password. Okay, so let me just add a W, E, and W, E. And then now Tom has a new password. All right, and now for the first time, Tom is logged in. Can you see Tom is logged in? And now he has access to all of the components that makes up our Microsoft Office. You can now click any of them and you'll be able to use any of my application, any of the organization's applications. All things going equal. So this is single sign-in now for Tom. All of the applications that have been shared with Tom, 137, whatever the number is, they will appear here and all he will do, provided all of that things are equal, you just click here to load the application. So this is single sign. Uh, I'm not sure we we'll need the WE that I added in future, but let me just add it. Okay, that is the password for form in case you need to log back in. As for July, this is the password. All right. All right, guys, so what else do we have? We completed all of these. And then we just assign, and then we check the, and then we can now go back to the email and copy. Let's go and copy that URL. Because every time Tom comes to work, this is the singular URL now that he enters to have access to everything. Just this, okay, see, and then uh, the different browser and then control V, all right? So there is no need, what's the username? Tom Atwell, the item.com, all right? And then password, thank God we saved it. So we just go, I think, let's see if we grab it from where we saved it. Uh, for Tom, is uh, this one, let's see. And then every time we are logging in from a different browser, it's as good as assuming that this is now Tom logging in remotely from their own system. Verify. And that works. Now, the thing is, even the Azure account that we've been working with, we can now even have the Azure account represented here, so that in order to log in to Azure, he will not even come to portal.azure.com. He will just click here and log into Azure. Uh, let's see if we can try that together. I'll try that before. Uh, so let's go to, uh, I think that may be a bit complex, but let's try. So I'll go back to administrator, log in as administrator, uh, this is Tom. No, I don't want to work as Tom. And I want to work as the uh, Atelier. Or July actually. Okay. Yeah. So now I want to see assign application. Uh, no, not yet. So let me go back to. Okay, so many things open. We have to start all over. Why is he need this? I can close it. I don't need you anymore. Uh, I don't need you anymore. What about here? What about here? Uh, let's go back. Home. Uh, at this time, oh. I don't want to log in. Tom is already somewhere, so I signed Tom out here. Logging as Tom somewhere. And uh, this is July, yeah. Okay. 
you take me home and then log me in at July. Okay, so for username at July, what's mine? Let me go and copy that. For username and July, did I not copy my email, at my URL? I copied the URL now, where did I keep it? I hope I'm not using Sam's URL. Okay, so let's try. So for July, control C, and then uh, control V, and then password, uh, control C, control V. All right. Uh, yes, at the correct URL. All right, so that's good. And now what I want to do is uh, experiment with, uh, you know, I have not tried that before now. Or did I try anything? So I see browse the catalog of applications that are already integrated. Is there anything about a job portal here? A job portal login. Oh, wow. Okay, let's try. It. Add integration. All right. Add integration, add your portal login, okay. Uh, this label, add your portal login, yes. And then what? Uh, sign in, open in, create update, done. All right, now assign that to, uh, people. Now let me assign this to July this time. And I say assign to July. And then username, assign a job portal login to people. Right? So username, July, password, that. User set password and user, username and password. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, at least let's see if that appears as an as assigned application. That's all I need to show. All right. So the, let's go back now. I'm still logged in. Let me go ahead and assign uh, to, to the other person as well. That's even the one that concerns you. So I say assign to Tom. And then I say save. Yeah. So it's not assigned to Tom. All right. So now that that is assigned to Tom, it means that once Tom logs on, he does not need to log out of here to go and log into Azure. So the Azure application as an application is now also represented here. So if I refresh now, I expect to see somewhere here so that Tom can simply click that in order to connect and log into Azure. So let's try. So if I refresh, ah, awesome. That worked. It's the first time I'm trying. All right. So if you have an actual account in a job, you can now present its username and password to log into a job. So what am I saying with this? I'm saying that as an employee of this company, this is where you'll be doing all of your signing from. All right? So even your own regular Azure account that you normally do Azure.portal right here, we don't need it anymore because this one that we normally type here with username and password is now represented right here, All right? Right here, where is it? That was what we clicked to get it. Awesome, All right? So we've had uh, somebody in class who said, who, con who I think it was even actually him that uh, suggested it. And he confirms that even though they have access to hundreds of applications, they do not need to log in one by one. Once they log into Okta, through Okta, they have access to everything. So this is the singular account through which you have access to everything. So the organization at interviews may ask, uh, I mean, they may ask at interviews questions like, uh, how do you onboard and offboard staff in the organization? So Okta, the mention of Okta at that point would be a very good answer, all right? Because once you onboard and you give uh, access to the employee to all of the applications they need. It's a very, very easy way to offboard them just by 
removing them from this account or by deleting this account or by suspending this account, you've prevented them from accessing one, two, three, four, hundreds of applications. So onboarding and offboarding will be easier, much easily done with Okta than you would do with uh, Microsoft Azure. You come here, you go to user, and then you, you know, all those click, 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 click. Meanwhile, here you just disable a single account. And remember that even if you, even if just click, click, click to get to use that and disable account, even if for you it's not a problem, it's very easy. But what about doing it for three, four, five, seven, 35 different applications? So for that reason, it's easier to do with it. All right, guys, I guess I've talked talking too much. But you got the point. Any question with that? I guess that was straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah, it's straightforward. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I, was wondering, I was wondering that you guys are not even talking. No, we're here. No, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. I was talking, I thought, but well, I don't realize that it's muted. So I just got it mute. Uh, okay. All right, so that's basically for that. Uh, yeah, you can add applications. Of course, we just added one application right now, right? We added uh, Azure. Azure. I wish I can add that to the name. Well, it's very easy. There's nothing. And then you can request. So this is Tom now. Let's Tom log in. And then Tom wants to use an application. Ah, why did he say that the tutor gave me this application? Now? I saw him at the restaurant earlier on and I told him, ah, why now? Why did he not give me an application? Yeah. Then you can add request and say, uh, request the administrator to give you access to the application. So you come here and you say, give me access to what, 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 what? Uh, maybe AWS account or something, AWS uh, consoles or SAP, right? Send that request and then the administrator will receive it like a ticket and then act on it. Of course, with the ones that are free, you can buy yourself. Just say, oh, this ones are free, free ones. I don't need any other. And just take it and say, add it to the list of questions that I can ask you. It's very easy to use. That's why it's popular. You don't need to be a technical person. You need to use this. Just take this. All right, so I have this video that I thought looks good, and then I, I'm leaving it with you so that you can use it to look at how Octa work beyond what we have done here, because there are people that specialize. You know, IT have different specializations. Again, besides Sentinel, uh, Microsoft uh, Defender, and all of those other areas that we've talked about, somebody may want to specialize in Octa specifically. Only that area of fight haven't already understood the concept as we have discussed it and say, you know what, at this point, I love Okta, I just want to specialize. Then this video may be a good one for you. It's, uh, normally when I recommend videos, they are not more than uh, a few minutes long. All right, guys, so that's the end of uh, that. So as part of your self practice, <clears throat> you would. Uh, Basically, practice everything we have done. This is not anything new. This is just saying, remember to practice what we have done. Under Microsoft Entra ID, practice everything we have covered. Remember what role-based access control is and the policies, all right? Under Azure Key Vault Management, practice everything we've covered. Under Database Management, you should be able to see, I led initiative to bolster the security posture of Azure Database. You cannot claim that way if you don't even know how to create Azure database. You don't know what button to click to implement encryption. Although encryption is already enabled by default, encryption at rest. But of course, we want to play around as much as possible with all of these technical terms at interview so that they will know that we know that. App service, wow, this is very wide and we talk extensively about this because they won't know, right? So app service uh, plan optimization, well, we said this is the platform. App service plan, actually. 
Then this is the platform where the developers will be working, you'll be supporting them, you can create your dev, your operations, your everything within. And then of course we talked about the cloud defender, and then we talked about Microsoft. So this and watch the videos all over and make sure you're able to practice enough to be able to claim this. These are basically what is appearing in your resume. Maybe this way directly or indirectly saying that you understand what this means. That you're able to integrate Microsoft Sentinel as a central hub for security information and event management. You're able to implement it. You're able to so practice it to be able to claim that. All right? Uh, develop custom dashboard. Um, ah, no, no, you cannot. You know where playbooks are. You can talk about playbooks, but definitely it is not your work to create a brand new playbook. But you know what they are. You know they are all there within there. All right. Optimize the app services plan. Of course, we created. Yeah, we did everything here. We did everything. This practice. Yes, I feel somebody is about to ask it. Okay, so possible interview question. Uh, we already have this in. Run me through the daily routine of your current role. Uh, then, then, yeah, just read this as it relates specifically to Microsoft. Uh, so, so are you going? Are you going to give us this uh, refined uh, version of the notes? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's yours. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what I have specially for you today is uh, a day in the life. So, another way of Actually, a primary way of looking at this. So this is uh, specific to the answers I have here is specific to Azure security engineer. But generally, as a team member, this is more relevant. So I think this was in this class that I promised somebody that uh, at the end of the session, he should bring up that question again. So this is the answer that uh, I had in mind for that your question. All right, so let's look at this one. So a day in the life of Azure Security Engineer. As Azure Security Engineer, you are a member of the cloud operations team. I hope you know that, All right? So Azure Engineer, you are part of the security. Actually, security operations is better. Sorry, not cloud operations. Security operations, but security operations is now also part of cloud operations, All right? Because we call it cloud operations because everything you are doing, you are doing in cloud. Everything we learned under Azure security. Was it not in, um, in Azure cloud that we learned in? So as long as you are working in cloud, you are in cloud operation. Well, cloud is wide. You have database cloud, security in cloud, applications in cloud, this in cloud. So of all of that, you belong to the security operation. All right. So it, you, you definitely take this to interview because just when the interview is warming up and they say, tell me about yourself and what you do on the Daily basis, this is the answer. All right? So uh, you don't have to memorize it exactly as it is, but you should, whatever answer you give, you reflect the fact that so, uh, on a typical day, you support the team of developers working on the organization's application. Mm -hmm. And this team of developers, otherwise called the development team, would need you who need resources on a regular basis for the application that they are developing. Who can give me an example of resources that they need? This interview preparation. So the team request, which team are we talking about? The team that you are supporting as the Azure security engineer. Can you give me an example of a team that you would support? Everything you have learned on top. Maybe I should bring this one up. Let me bring this one. Because it's not important. Let's try and answer so that we can know whether you know it or not, so that we can correct. Uh, um, most likely, they will request us for the access to our uh, either a virtual machine or virtual network. Okay. That's great. So, but in this case, always assume that whatever they are requesting access to does not already exist. So what are you going to do? Yeah, the, our, our own is just to create, then give access. Create, give access. Uh, yeah, this, this time it's not just, just remove that word, just. It's a big deal okay. now. <laughs> yeah. 
So you create the resource and then you give them access as they have requested. What yeah. is this thing that you are creating resource and giving access? The developer's team. Yeah. Although you are all part of the same team, because yeah. the team will be made up of developers, DevOps engineers, security engineers, database people, and so on and so forth. But most of them will be developed. All right. right. So what they do is they will submit a ticket through a ticket forum, like Jira. So we have Jira, we have ServiceNow, we have other ticketing forum. So this is the place where even as you are sleeping and the organization that your organization is supporting, maybe your organization is a contractor or a uh, consulting company to, to T-Mobile, for example. So by the time you wake up, T-Mobile would have submitted like three tickets about the issues that they encountered on the application while you were sleeping. So all of those tickets will be submitted by T-Mobile to the ticketing platform. What ticketing platform do you use in your organization? ServiceNow. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's the, that's the one. We use ServiceNow and we run also. And I know uh, Aminta Group, which is an insurance company in... Uh, the, the company actually is based in Texas, but they our office, since they bought our company, we use um, Asia because at one time I mistakenly clicked the Asia PowerShell and the thing, okay. opened, the thing opened up, but then I didn't want to write rubbish and just try to, you know, I didn't want to cause any problem. So I just, I just X out on the thing, but I know we use Azure PowerShell on, uh, oh. we use ServiceNow for our tickets. Oh, beautiful. Of course, Azure PowerShell is a, is a month for, for this kind of, work. all right, that's beautiful. All right, so the rest of you can claim ServiceNow or you can just look up a, a 10 minute video on YouTube just to, will be able to claim that you have seen Jira, Jira before, or you've seen how they work. So this is where your you and your contractors will co collaborate in terms of, ah, we're having this issue. We need it resolved, all right? So when you wake up and you go to work after the regular morning meetings that uh, we, I think we explained that somewhere below, then this is what you mean. So you, so what do you do? Yeah, the team, topics. Uh, why is this one coming first? Okay, so when team requests resources, how do they tell you? Not through phone call. They give, yeah, I'm just going elementary because of this other guy. So they, they do it by submitting a ticket. Using what forum? Using the forum that they use. In the case of uh, Sam, they use service now. All right, guys, so what's the next thing? Ticket prioritiz prioritization. This is not your work. So usually, the project management team, usually made up of the Scrum master and the product owner, they would have looked at all of these tickets and then rearranged them in order of priority. Because you could wake up and come and find a hundred different tickets. How do you know which one to work on first and which one to work on last? So they will prioritize them. All right. And then the prioritization will look something like this on your ticketing platform. Maybe not exactly like this, but to give a message in terms of how the severity nature of that particular ticket. For example, a ticket one could say, uh, out of the three or seven customers that your organization supports, this is coming from Costco. And it says, customers need guidance on Active Directory Framework Pipeline Setup. So that is the ticket. This is the issue you need to resolve. Or T-Mobile could send in the ticket and say, for view CPU, peg in depth. So whatever the issue is, this is where you see, all right? So on your own now at interviews, you are going to say uh, issues. Don't worry, I think I have somewhere. I have it somewhere down. But you get it now that you, you will not be confused if there are 100 tickets. The tickets will be marked in order of priority. When it is marked priority A, it means that you must respond to that ticket within 15 minutes, for example. It will vary from company to company, all right? So priority B means uh, this is high. You must respond within four hours. Priority C, medium. Rest, you have eight hours to respond. So this way you are not confused. And again, this is not your work. This is the work that the project manager, the, yeah, just call it project management team would have done on the ticketing platform before you wake up to come and find, oh, these are the jobs waiting for you. 
All right. So, uh, Sam, do you have any contribution here? And um, no, not 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 really, not really. Yeah. Um, but it's just that the way you're explaining it now, it's I think it's gonna really make it easy for me. Yeah, the way you explain it makes it easy for me because with the company we work for, like we, we work for like Ally Bank, um, GM Financial, BMW, um, like all the finance companies. Yeah, so, you're a big you're a big guy. They must be paying you seven figures, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, big, big companies. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. And um one one thing too, I it's just that I, I have not put those companies, even though we work for them, I've not put those companies on my resume yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I feel like the like I don't know until I'm sure with my skills, then mm -hmm. I'll yeah, then I'll put those things on my resume. But the way, yeah. the way you're explaining it now, like the customer section on that ticket uh, thing, when you say Kaiser Permanente, it just reminds me of when we have like a, a GM financial calling for something, or okay. maybe somebody from a Chrysler. Okay. Uh maybe a tech agent from Chrysler is calling our office and then they put in like a ticket and then we get that information over oh. there. Oh wow! Yeah, so oh, wow. so so now that you explain it, I can just use that experience, use that that concept to uh to understand what you are what you're talking about here. Awesome, awesome, yeah. that's great. All right, so your own work now starts by pulling the ticket. So you log into your the you as the adjust security engineer, you log into the ticketing platform, log into your service now, or to your Jira, and then what? you view the list of tickets. Depending on how many projects you are managing, I mean, how many projects are coming in concurrently, you could have tickets ranging from only 10 tickets to maybe hundreds of tickets. Depending on the, the number of projects running concurrently. Okay. So from here now, we already explained how you'll be guided to know what ticket to pull. Sometimes the ticket is assigned to you outrightly and your name is just there. I mean, whether they address you by your name or they address you by your position, you just see that for this ticket, it is, it's is been assigned to you. So you click it and then you start to read. This, this is the problem of the ticket. So this is what you are trying to resolve, right? So you pull the ticket based on the priority in case it's, your name is not there it's just a matter of once you finish it you take the next one then you pull, pull it and then once you pull it what do you do you start to work on it it doesn't mean that because you have completed this training then automatically you can answer and resolve all issues no 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 it doesn't just like uh, sam is saying now at least he has a clearer idea of how these things work now he's not able to say he's not able to know, at least have an idea what to do. So normally you will need to investigate the ticket details and requirements by doing additional research, right? So sometimes you know, ah, this one, we did it in training. Oh, this one, I had the same uh, encounter with uh, our other contractor three weeks ago, I'm familiar with it. But it's not all the time that you know the exact problem. So you do your investigation. Sometimes you may even need to repli replicate the environment that they are saying they have issues. Ah, why, why are they having it? Okay, let me set it up. Ah, but it's working here now. What? And then based on that, uh, that uh, experience that you gain from the replicated environment, you now understand the problem. And you can probably, oh, this is what they are doing wrong. Oh, okay. Then you stop. Right? And then some, most of the time, maybe not sometimes as well, maybe not most of the time, remember that you are part of a team. So this may be outside of your immediate jurisdiction. So you may want, ah, man, this is networking related. Why don't we, this is network related. Why don't I meet the network guy? And then as a team, let us look at this together to see, oh, okay. And then input from other team member may be able to resolve it. So if necessary, discuss the, with the back end team for additional insight or clarification for this problem. And you are seeing that this is really closely related to what uh, support engineers do. So cloud security to support. Yeah. It's basically support. It's just that you are supporting 
within the jurisdiction and subject matter area of class. Okay. All right, so now that you have met with your team or you have gone to fora like uh, Tac Overflow or you have done your research using AI or you have conduct, con consulted your manual and documentation, now you are ready for the fifth step. Implement the solution that you have come up with after all of this. All right, so you develop and implement the solution to this problem that you have here. Right? And then you communicate your through email, whatever. Sometimes it's phone call, communicate your solution. And then documentation is very important. And try, if you have the time, to mention that in your interview. Document, document the steps taken and any relevant information for future reference. So the whole idea is in future, when they have this kind of issue again, just like you were able to go to some documentation and you were able to pull the solution, somebody else should be able to go to your own documentation and be able to, to say, oh, this was the same issue. Okay, this is the solution. So your company will show you the format and how to write documentation. And then it becomes part of Where do you load this documentation? So your central repository that is related to this project. Your GitHub account. If it is GitHub or your Azure repository or your S3 box, whatever it is that they are using as their central uh, their repository system, that is where you upload your documentation. And then once uh, you have the solution, what do you do? Verification. Ensure the request to verify the solution meets their need. So the person who sent the ticket earlier on, if you able to communicate with you, oh, that's beautiful. It's working now. It's working now. Thank you so much. It's working. All right. And then once that is done, you now use the same Jira from where you receive the ticket. You say the ticket, this issue has been resolved and the ticket is now closed. So this is what you will go through as uh, the first stage of the, int uh, the initial uh, five, 10 minutes of the, no, maybe not, okay, of the interview to give them an overview of what you do on a daily basis. It's not up to them to now say, oh, okay, fine. Uh, you said that you, in one of those issues that you actually created uh, an entry ID. What exactly did you do? How did you do it? They cannot go from there to specifics. Specifics in terms of the projects or tasks that you have executed with a view to finding out whether you actually did it or you are just ready. All right, so does that help the rest of you? So you don't have to memorize this and just say it exactly as it is, but if on a regular basis, if you can just go through this in five minutes. So typically we'll have a, I pull my tickets from uh, our Jura board and depending on the priority of the ticket, I know which one to pull first and which one to pull that and then so on a typical day, I log in to my ticketing platform. We use Jira or we use ServiceNow. And then I, I look at all of the tickets that have, uh, that have been submitted by our various clients. And depending on the other priority, I begin to pull them and uh, resolve them one by one. So I'll typically look at uh, each ticket. And then if it's something that, that I know to do, I already have the answer to, I do it right away. Sometimes I may need to consult documentation, look up some things using the help of AI, and sometimes even uh, collaborate with my team, All right? They like to hear teamwork. So arrive at best solution for the situation, and then I'll deploy the solution, follow up to ensure that the solution meets 